Hey folks, welcome to the next and the latest edition of AK Ask Me Anything. Today we're here with Li Chen Luo, who is one of our engineering managers that takes care of Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager. Thanks for joining us, Li Chen. First of all, I guess, can you tell us a bit about Fleet and the Fleet team and what the team does? Sure. Uh, fleet is all about uh, multi-cluster management. Uh, when we use the term fleet because it's a fleet of Kubernetes clusters. Yeah. And uh, the team uh, mainly work on uh, how do we manage the cluster lifecycle of the fleet and also how do we uh, manage the workload on top of mm -hmm. the many clusters because now you have to think about how do I do my deployments across yeah. so many clusters. So, uh, so you have basically the two kind of two missions, maybe even more. One is how to manage the, you said the life cycle of many clusters, and the other how to manage workloads across many clusters. Tell, right. tell me a bit about what does it mean to manage the life cycle of many clusters? What's an, an example of something you'd have to do across many clusters? So, uh, for example, today we have a core feature called a multi-class upgrade. Oh, upgrades, like, of course. You need to upgrade Kubernetes versions, then you probably want to do it like in a more reliable way, such mm -hmm. that you upgrade the test class first, mm -hmm. then staging, then prod, and uh, we help to orchestrate the upgrade of multiple clusters. Oh, yeah, of course. So, so you, you basically are, are clustering the different clusters uh, uh, in, in the stages where you want them to go, and then you, you, otherwise you have to do that yourself, right? You, you have to orchestrate That's yourself right. which clusters you have, Target the upgrades, you know, with the maintenance window. So probably maybe you have stuff across the world in different regions that can become pretty complex. And so Fleet does that for me. I'll just set up my my stages, my groups, and then from there, uh, my test gets first, you know, and then and then my production after that. That's right. Today, right. I think a lot of people are doing this either through clicking the UI or writing oh, their yeah. own script to yeah. upgrade classes one by one. Yeah. So. Yeah, basically we automate all of that. So it's like probably one click or one call to trigger the whole workflow. Oh, and then it goes automatically. What, ha what if something happens? Like an upgrade fails uh, or, or? Yeah, so uh, we automatically stop if a cluster failed. Okay. And we also allow users to add soak time. Uh, for example, soak for maybe one week between two stages so that they can verify whether everything's working, then stop it. If and then continue. If yeah. Okay, very, right. very good. And so, what has the team been been doing recently? What's what's some of the new stuff that you can tell our audience that uh, the, the fleet team has been working on? So, I think a couple of weeks ago we went to Kubecom and we announced yes. uh, uh, two new exciting features in fleet. One is for class upgrade. We announced uh, the GA of auto upgrade of multiple clusters. Then See? we also uh, announced the uh, like staged rollout of workload across clusters. Okay, so in one case. If I were to guess by the name, that's essentially what we just described, but triggered fully automatically, so that when new upgrades come in, the different stages that we just talked about, they just start to get the upgrade automatically at, at the remainder window. Okay, and that's exactly. now GA. Yeah. And what's about the second one? That seems to be more related to that second area that you mentioned before, which was how to manage workloads across different clusters. Um, what, what's that feature about, and what's that area about? Yeah. So. Uh uh, in Fleet, we have feature, uh, I mean, a custom resource, we call it cluster resource placement. What it mm -hmm. does is that uh, you can tell it, oh, I want to select this namespace and uh, automatically place it into selected clusters. Uh, however, that used to happen like sequentially, one by one. Mm -hmm. Now we introduce this thing called a staged rollout. That means oh, you can create a stages of test clusters, uh, Staging clusters, canary cluster, and product clusters, mm -hmm. then telling us, oh, use this uh, staged strategy to roll out my uh, workload in the same way as how you do cluster upgrade. However, probably you. But for uh, your workload. Okay, so in one. Right. Okay, so it's exactly the same concept. Like you, you still have your different environments, but right. uh, on one end, you are able to control the, the upgrade of a cluster itself, in the other, for example, the upgrade of your workload of your app and how you're rolling out. In Azure, we have this very uh, common concept and we talk about it publicly of safe deployment uh, that's practice. Right. And, and that's all about how we uh, progress through the, the Azure regions and even within the Azure regions slowly, so to each different environment and we target them. So it kind of allows the user to do the same type of approach, right? That's right. Basically, we allow user to roll out their cluster upgrades, also probably roll out their workload changes in similar ways. So yeah, that's very uh, cool. It's very reliable. So that was KubeCon. Yes. What, what have we been doing since? Oh, after we came, came back from KubeCon, uh, we are very busy working on a, f a couple of new features 
uh, on top of what we already have. For example, uh, customers is asking about, oh, uh, soak time between stages is not enough. Because uh, when the soak time expires, it automatically proceeds to the next one. Mm -hmm. can, we, can you allow us to approve that manually? Because we may want to wait indefinitely if, if we want to, so that they feel like really safe to uh, proceed. So now we are adding gates between stages and also gates actually before and after each stage and gates before and after each group. Mm -hmm. It allows you to turn on those gates so that you can approve uh, before or after stage or group. Gotcha. And then I think on the uh, workload placement side, uh, we are also working on uh, a new feature. It's, 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 it's a networking related feature. Like okay. think about that, like you have, you deploy a workload to two clusters. Yeah. How do you route traffic to those two clusters? And uh, if you move, uh, right. say the workload from these two classes to another a different set of two classes. Right. How do they? How do you change the load balancer to route traffic automatically to those right. uh, classes? So, so the times where that would occur is either situations like I'm running on a, an active-active setup, maybe different regions, or I want to have routing to my nearest cluster, or. In your second case, I suppose something like a disaster recovery type of scenario, where maybe I'm moving things from one cluster to the other. So, I, well, I can think of a few ways. I don't, I don't know that I know an easy way. Uh, I guess I could set up my own things like traffic manager myself and then start to point to, uh, I guess, regional load balancers and, and I guess take care of all that myself. But I suspect you're proposing something different. Yeah, that's right. Basically, we uh, automate uh, the program of traffic managers to point to the right uh, load balancer Ooh. as you deploy the workload to the cluster. Oh, so because I'm deploying the workload through fleet, you're already programming the traffic manager to point to the right environment. Then, okay. And what happens in, in the disaster recovery scenario? Then I can change my workload to a different cluster and then that automatically gets programmed into traffic. That's wow, right. that's really good. Okay. So I can do it both in kind of an active-active way where I just deploy to multiple clusters and both are running, or even I could deploy to one that gets programmed in the traffic manager. And then if something happens, for example, I could deploy it to the other cluster still through Fleet, and Fleet takes care of updating all those. That's, That's nice. Right. In That's some nice. cases, for example, you want to upgrade a cluster, then before you upgrade, you want to probably drain all the workload. Then the workload will move to a different cluster. Mm -hmm. Then traffic manager will automatically route to a new cluster while you maintain, like, upgrade that cluster. It's starting to sound like magic. I'm, I'm looking forward to see that in, in, in play. Great. Oh, uh, by the way, like, we showed a couple uh, cool demos in Cubicon. Do you want to see them? Oh, I, if I get to see this, that would be great. Let's, let's take a look. Okay, let's go to my desk. All right, let's take a look at that demo then. Yeah, this is a real interesting demo. Most demo end with a happy ending. This one actually has a bad ending. Oh. Let's start. <laughs> a demo with a bad ending, that's interesting, yeah. okay. Here's a fleet uh, with five clusters. Mm -hmm. It's like at version 128. Yeah. And we also show like what's the version for each node pool. Okay. Now let's uh, try to create a strategy. Strategy is where you create this uh, staged stages uh, like here we have canary stage, then we will wait for one hour before we proceed to the port stage. The port stage has two groups, APAC and Europe. And now we are going to create an auto upgrade profile. Uh, give it a name, maybe stable something. Then uh, you can enable or disable it uh, by default. I think we should enable it. Mm -hmm. uh, then we will use the stage way. Uh, Different channels. Yeah, define like whether you want to do stable. Then you pick a strategy. Basically, the strategy we defined earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Now this auto upgrade profile is created. It actually automatically create a run whenever a new stable community version is released. This so is the new version run. comes in, and then okay. Yeah, you can see it's running. It will. It's running the canary stage. It will do this. Uh, Canary clusters one by one. Uh -huh. Okay, it's failed. Okay, here's the bad news. <laughs> yeah, then you check, like, click the details, you will see the error message. It says, oh, upgrade is blocked because. Oh, no, this is good. API is Breaking deprecated. changes, yeah, yeah, okay. So, this is actually a good failure. That's you, right. We stopped it, that would cause a, a problem, and we actually stopped it. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think the good thing is that uh, 
you had an auto upgrade profile and you also see all the upgrade we are doing by mm -hmm. looking at this update run. Mm -hmm. You see when we do the upgrade and when why it failed and when it finishes and things like that. Basically, it, it gives you a full visibility. Yeah. You can see now, now you the corrected clusters. it and now everything is, is properly done. So it came automatically yeah. but still stopped in the case yeah, of Yeah, it stopped. Uh, you can also go there and click start again. Yeah. If you fix the problem, it will retry the failures. Very, very good. And so uh, this is that auto upgrade uh, capability. It's interesting because we actually had uh, Ye with us in the past edition of Ask Me Anything talking about security patching and, and the security up upgrades. Uh, so the question I think comes in, which is, does that security patching work with Fleet already? Uh, so today we only support a, a node image upgrade and a Kubernetes version upgrade uh -huh. or stable and rapid. Uh -huh. However, we are not supporting uh, security patches yet. That will be our, our roadmap. Uh -huh. So it is, it is coming and it's something the team is working on. Very, very good. What about the demo, that magical demo that you promised me that does placement? Oh yeah, that one. That one is on the next slide. So this is for a briefing that you did recently, was it? Very good. Yes. Very interesting. So we showed a demo uh, in Kubecon. Uh, oh, for Kubecon. Okay, very good. Yeah, and uh, it's overcrowded. Oh, nice. And so this is uh, what your namespace is across your fleet? Yes. Here we are showing that uh, we have two clusters. Uh, we have also uh, on this uh, fleet, right, we mm -hmm. have a namespace called a quad. Mm -hmm. And now we are trying to uh, get a credential to access the fleet. Mm -hmm. The fleet contains the hub cluster. Right. Uh, now we are going to apply this uh, quad deployment and mm -hmm. service onto the fleet hub cluster using kubectl apply, uh, very straightforward. Uh, however, one thing to notice is that uh, although we create deployment here, nothing will be running, no pods will be created because the fleet hub cluster is uh, like config only cluster. You cannot make the workload running. Now we are going to... Oh, because you didn't say which actual cluster you want to run it. Gotcha. Yeah, now we are going to create a placement. It says, oh, I want to place this, uh, uh, like, a uh, quad application to mm -hmm. Korean Central. So okay. So now we are checking that uh, whether Korean Central has the, the application. Uh, yeah, the application. Right you can there. see the service is up and running, mm -hmm. and you can click the external IP to access the service. Mm -hmm. uh, I think next we will show another different placement where we will say a place uh, two copies of the application and uh, so that would be like an active active two regions yeah it says to polish the bread based on region so mm -hmm. that's it to automatically pick two different regions if you have two yep and uh, now since we only have two clusters in two regions both clusters will get it and you can see it was placed to two clusters successfully and uh, you can check uh, on each cluster uh, whether the application is up and running. This is cluster one. You can see it's running. Then uh, we probably will also check the other cluster, which is in France Central. Demo wouldn't be complete if you didn't show both, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. one in France and one, where is the other, Korea? Yeah, Korea Central. Nice. Yeah. And so both are running. Both two different, two running. different uh, versions. Very, very nice. And this was all done automatically, and you just submitted, as you show, like one deployment into the fleet hub instead of having to set up a bunch of pipelines and a bunch of that. And this is That's also right. what you're now telling that you could even stage this so you could go and deploy to some clusters first and other clusters after that. After you validate that environment, then you could stage that rollout across all That's of them. That's right. In the demo, it's done automatically, like it's automatically sequential rollout, but mm -hmm. you can do the uh, manual stage rollout right. where you can say, do not roll out automatically. Right. I will do it myself. Right. Then you create a staged update run. Then you, then you say uh, when you when you create, it will kick off. Then it will do stage by stage instead of just sequentially. Very very cool. Well, this was great. Thank you for showing me. Uh, so I think when the first demos in, uh, it asked me anything. To finish, what are some of the things that you're excited that the team's working on? Oh, so uh, I think, I mean, today we are mainly focus on uh, placement and mm -hmm. the class upgrade. I feel mm -hmm. there's more we can do on the class lifecycle management. For example, how do we create clusters automatically? Ah, yes. Like, uh, even more exciting is that uh, how do we achieve the, uh, like the North Star goal where 
you can simply create workload without worrying about the clusters. Oh, yes. You say, oh, I want to have a workload that is running in France and Korea, and uh, I do not create the clusters. You just, just create the clusters on the you fly. Just, right. So, because right. in this case, you actually had the clusters created in yeah. those two places. They were part of the fleet, and then fleet took care of that. But what you're saying is you should be able to even submit those workloads with that. Uh, it's like a zone uh, affinity, but now for region. And then fleet would take care of actually creating and taking care of those environments for you. That would be, that's yeah. nice. I think what will be even more cool is that, for example, we can allow customers to say, oh, I want to deploy this application, one into Europe, one to US. Mm -hmm. But I don't care which region. Just like pick a region that has capacity yeah. and create a cluster. Or I have my quota better or yeah. my better price. Yeah, absolutely. That would be quite amazing. Yeah, I'm very excited for what the team is producing. Thank you so much for having the time to show me these demos and, and talk to us. And thank you all for uh, attending another AK Ask Me Anything. As usual, like and subscribe to our AK Ask community and let us know what other topics you'd like us to cover in our next AK Ask Me Anything. Thank you. Great.